Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you iron it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. Every year when there's a budget, what is my job? I don't know economics. I can't, I can't figure out the numbers in the budgets. Those things are left to domain specialists. My job is to search for the biggest political takeaways. So searching for the biggest political takeaway or takeaways in Nirbala Sitaraman's pre-election budget is what you won't find it, you won't find any luck with it, even on a most thorough reading of the budget. You know why? Because what's most important, political point, is the missing P. What is the missing P? No giveaways, no welfare schemes, no new welfare schemes, no tax cuts, no exemptions, nothing. P, therefore, stands for populism. So the missing P or the missing factor in this budget is populism and that missing factor is the biggest political message of this budget. Why? We explain that for you. Read this budget therefore as a declaration of victory a month before Lok Sabha elections are even announced. This is something old timers like us have forgotten to expect. Later generations or, or those that started voting 1989 onwards wouldn't have seen something, something that looks so bland because every pre-election budget has promises or or some new announcements. This blandness, however, is the statement of electoral confidence and the key message from this budget. It was quite some time back that a pre-election budget ceased to be a mere vote on account. A vote on account was to carry on government spending until the newly elected government came in with a full budget mid-year. In the course of time, this vote on account became an interim budget. Compare this year's budget statement with what Piyush Goel presented ahead of the elections in 2019, the last elections. It launched PM Kisan, a welfare scheme as wide in its political impact as in financial cost. It raised income tax slabs at several levels, bringing relief to millions of people and brought in some other important and voter-friendly changes as well. This one, this one has none of this. Even the rooftop solar scheme to which is linked this promise of 300 units of free power. This is linked to your rooftop solar. Even this, this scheme was one that Prime Minister Narendra Modi had already unveiled on the day of the Ram Temple consecration. The rest is just a continuation and some expansion, housing for the poor for example. So there, there is expansion of some existing schemes but otherwise nothing new. The absence of populism, however, should not be misread as that of politics. Nothing the Modi government says or does is ever without politics. The standout point here is a formidable counter to the most two most important lines of attack the BJP typically faces from its challengers on social justice and secularism. The words social justice and secularism feature in this budget speech, secularism at least once, social justice at least thrice. Much of, much of India Bloc's new campaign is built on caste-based social justice, with promise on caste censuses and distribution of benefits in accordance with each group's numbers, jiski jitni azadi, uska utna haq. As its first political counter, the BJP lowered back Nitish Kumar, the caste census man of the match, because he is the one who released the Bihar caste census, held a caste census and released the results also. Karnataka, the previous Congress government held a caste census, but even this government has not released the results. He did in Bihar. He is the one that the BJP now lowered back. So it's like the other side is set up to play a final match with you, but you take their man of the match in advance. That's what's happened. Next, see what follows in this budget. The social justice section in the budget seeks to give it a completely different meaning, defining its approach to development as all-round and pervasive, I am quoting now, all-round, all-pervasive -perva and all-inclusive, quotes close there. It says it covers all castes, once again quotes begin, it covers all castes and people at all levels, quotes closed. After elaborating on this a bit more, it says 
previously again i am quoting again the quotes begin it says previously social justice was just a political slogan for this government sitaraman said social justice and i quote again social justice is an effective and necessary governance model and saturation approach of covering all eligible people is the true and comprehensive social justice this is where secularism is also shoehorned into the proposition and i quote again this is secularism in action she says a long time reader of indian politics will put it under the box where the modi shah bjp hyphenates social justice with secularism and tries to counter both with its sabka saath sabka vikas so ek teer se do shikar hitting two targets striking two targets with one arrow this is a this is a carefully crafted political pitch and i lean again on the budget document and quote from it the resources are distributed fairly all regardless of their social standing get access to opportunities that's what sitaraman said the idea is again the idea is to again quote the idea is to address systemic inequalities that plague our society the political pitch therefore is to divorce socio economic status and a share of national resources from identity domain experts and economists will look at the numbers i find it is significant positive that an incumbent is going to the polls claiming a track record of building infrastructure physical assets as well as virtual and makes a larger allocation for the new year for infrastructure remember there is there isn't a larger allocation for national rural employment guarantee scheme it's the same as before in fact the defense budget if anything marginally 1000 crores it's nothing in the big picture but marginally if at all it has gone down not gone up that's that those are very important figures whereas infrastructure the numbers have gone up if infrastructure becomes a vote catching factor it is a significant positive for indian politics think about it the same budget could have doubled the give, giveaways under the pm kisan program instead that it wasn't done tells us three things one that the bjp is confident of winning even even nonchalant about the elections two that it thinks things like infrastructure more educational institu institutions and soft entrepreneurial loans will work quite well instead and third that it isn't willing to suspend its fiscal caution in an election year that's why another significant takeaway in the budget statement is not just the figures that fiscal deficit targets have been met or have been bettered but the fact that government is claiming credit for not only keeping its commitment on fiscal deficit but pulling it back marginally when did when did that seem to be such a big virtuous thing to virtuous claim to make in an election year that's a positive this is what isn't expected in an election year when you generally expect a spending spree the fiscal discipline had better wait for next year right now let me somehow spend my way out of the, out of this anti incumbency and win my next election i will then correct my fisc later but that hasn't been done this time there are of course other elements we must take note of and not all are positive the big negative in our book would be an indication that the government is losing interest in disinvestment earlier targets have been missed and the new one is really low it will probably be said that the psu stock prices and valuations have gone up so why sell them now but then the excuse for not selling when stock prices are low is precisely this why sell now when the valuations are so poor let's wait let's wait for when they get better let's speak the truth now and and it's tempting therefore to say and i believe it's safe to draw the conclusion that philosophically this bjp also lacks atul bihari vajpayee's commitment to privatization all governments enjoy being in business while arguing against it they will continue saying jis desh ka raja vyapari uski praja bhikhari that wherever the monarch or the sovereign or the ruler is doing business is in business their subjects are always poor they are always beggars jis desh ka raja vyapari uski praja bhikhari they will say that but they will do the opposite that's why in conclusion ideologically that is one reform indian politics still waits for on the evidence of this full majority government over two terms yet it looks like that wait only got longer